So welcome today to Metro TV. We have four great nonprofits and four awesome events. Uh, we'll be talking to the folks from QLI, from Grief's Journey, Angels Among Us, and Ronald McDonald House Charities. So don't go away and we'll be right back. Well, I am here with an amazing, amazing woman, Lindsay Ray Corton. She is the executive director for the Ronald McDonald House Charities of Omaha. So many exciting things going on in your world, world, Lindsay. Um, and thank you for joining me today. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having us. Um, my gosh. So let's just talk a little bit. I actually want to read something. I want to read something real quick because I was reading through your profile and our giving guide, and I just love this. So at the Ronald McDonald Ronald McDonald House Charities in Omaha, um, we're for the fighters, the caregivers, the ones that have packed up their families and sick children, traveled hundreds of miles to an unfamiliar city, skipped meals, lost sleep, cried silently, fought ferociously, and hoped for the best care, for the best, even when faced with the worst. I mean, that really exemplifies exemplifies what you what your organization does and it and it's just amazing um and exciting things are on the horizon yeah absolutely am i allowed to talk about it yeah. right now yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> so i mean i just yeah so tell us a little bit about ronald mcdonald house and some of those exciting things sure you that passage encapsulates it perfectly we we really are we are for the people who won't give up even when they're given a diagnosis that might be terminal or even when they're told that there is no hope. These are the people that we take in and these are the people who are willing to stop at nothing to get their children the care that they need. And, and, and we being for the fighters, it's not just the fighters who are the kids fighting illness and it's not just for the parents who are fighting for their kids, it's for everyone who supports this. We're all fighting together to rally around these families yeah. to give them the help and support that they need. So from our perspective, when they come here and they're fighting for their lives, we come in on the hope and healing side in a place to provide as much serenity, respite, and normalcy as we can because the truth is the more normal their environment seems in a completely abnormal scenario, yeah. the better that child has a chance to heal. And so that's really what our entire focus is. So when it comes to providing services, we didn't think that it would be fair to stop at anything. And so not only are we in the midst of an expansion right now because we couldn't keep up with the demand, right. there's pieces that we've added to this that really complement what these families need that might have been outside of what we were capable of. So. For example, we're really great at hospitality when it comes to hope and healing. We can do that. We've got your meals, we've got your beds, we've got your good morning, we've got your support system. What we don't have is financial services and that's why Angels Among Us is moving in. What we also don't know how to do is provide treatment because we're not doctors, but that's why UNMC is gonna have an operational yeah. treatment center inside. So it's that and a number of other things that we're pulling together. Things like a hair salon, things like right. a, a non-denominational chapel, a laundry on every floor, simple things that Right. That really create an environment that is supportive of that child's needs and the I, whole I'm, family. I mean, I'm just so excited about this. I mean, it, it's on one hand, I mean, it's it's too bad that we have to have this kind of service. But on the other hand, people are stepping up and making this happen, yeah. which is big. Yeah. So, um, so let's talk a little bit. You have a fundraising event coming up. Yeah. Which is which is so unique and so awesome. So Wings and Wheels, what is that about? Oh, what isn't it about? No. We've got something for everybody. No. Wings and Wheels is one of the, and I don't mean this just because I'm completely biased, right. but it is the coolest event right. that I've ever been to. It's in a private airplane hangar. So yes. um, to be able to have ac accessibility to something like that is really unique and different for a lot of our folks and also the private jets that are there that you can see that are pretty cool. And then we have all of these exotic luxury right. cars and which are just awesome. Amazing. And so uh, we're really lucky that and and all of these cars are from individuals who are from Omaha. So you might yeah. not necessarily know that because we don't see a lot of the um, a lot of that driving right. around, but they bring them all here. And it's just really cool. It's a really cool blend of 
the community and us, and then we add on another layer in bringing in, um, well, so develop model management. So with Alyssa Dill, she brings yes. models Love in, Alyssa. Yeah. and then um, one of the featured designers that will be at Omaha Fashion Week, we use, usually bring one of them in to showcase their design. So it's a, it's a really nice braid of everything that we're doing in the community and how we can help the community at the same time. And so this event is on September 7th, so it's coming up really soon. Um, there's a VIP, people can buy VIP tickets um, or just buy general tickets. Sure. So how do people buy tickets? So the best way is to go online at um, www.rmhcomaha.org and we, well, you can just go straight to the events page and right. find your spot and you can get a table, you can get individual tickets, you can come to VIP, it's really up to you. Um, we just want you to there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So again, um, www.rmhcomaha.org. Go to the website. You can buy tickets there. Again, um, you've got some really great live auction items coming up um, available at the event. But again, you're just doing so much great work. And, and I just have to thank you. I oh. mean, thank you so much for, for what you guys do. And an exciting year coming up as you move into this new space. Yeah. So... Um, thanks for joining me, Lindsay, and I would and I would encourage everybody also to go to our giving guide because there's just a lot of different ways for people to give back to you. If it's not financially, it can be financially, but there's all a lot of other ways. Absolutely. Too. So yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Well, so thank much. you. Yeah. Right. And we'll be right back. Well, I am here with Jen and Garrett. They are here with QLI. Um, thank you and welcome for coming on the show. Yeah, thank thanks you. for um, having QLI us. QLI has a big event coming up an evening at the fair, but Jen, you're the Director of Marketing and Development for QLI. And Garrett, you are on, you're on the committee for the QLI. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the committee to promote the fair and I'm also a ambassador for QLI. Okay. So kind of public outreach, uh, QLI has always kind of been referred to as this great kept secret. And once we get people on campus, they kind of realize some of the magic that happens on campus. And they've got a really captivating culture that once you're part of it, you just want to stay part of it. I would agree. So Jen, tell us a little bit about what QLI is. Um, we are a private nonprofit exclusive just here in Omaha. Um, we specialize in healthcare and rehabilitation for young adults that have had traumatic brain injuries or spinal cord injuries. Um, so patients will come from all across the United States to Omaha to participate in our program where our goal is to help them get their life back after their injury. And that's, I mean, that's pretty amazing that you are like this, you know, the center of the United States and people come to, to use your services and it's so important because it's not just here locally, it's nationally mm -hmm. and how you're helping people. Um, so let's talk about the life path service services that you do because that's that's a term that you use throughout your your um, website and, and whatnot. So what is, what is that about? Sure, sure. Um, that's a great question. Life path services is also unique to QLI. Um, it is that piece of our program that addresses the things that every human loves, the, the passions they have in their life, the reasons that they get out of bed and get moving with their day in the morning. And a lot of times the folks that we serve, after they've had a severe injury, they think those things are lost. Yeah. Um, my role as a mom or my role as a volunteer at the church or my full-time job or helping get yeah. lunches in the backpack for school in the morning all looks very different after my injury. But those would be the things that drive me to be myself again. So Live Path Services focuses on that aspect of recovery and helping families reconnect those passions, the roles, the things that fuel their life, so to yeah. speak, and how to help them be independent and successful with that long past their injury. And typically, how long are people at QLI? Average length of stay runs about 90 to 95 days. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, again, we're here to talk about um, an evening at the fair. This event's coming up on September 14th one of my favorite events. It's so unique. Um, 
but I know it's every other year, and there and you have a different twist all the time. But what are some of the favorite? What are some of the favorite things that people can expect? Oh and then we'll gosh. talk about some of them that, some that are new. Well, you know, you, you said the word expect, and in terms of expectations, you know, we've all been to a lot of fundraisers, and there's typically, you know, you've kind of got a rule book of all right, this is what a fundraiser looks like, and in typical QLI fashion, you know, they threw out the rule book and they said how can we create an event that's really a fun event and it's going to you know, recognize uh, the residents that we serve and our employees and really celebrate all things QLI. And that's kind of what they've done with this event. So it's, as you said, it's every other year and the theme is always an evening at the fair. Mm -hmm. uh, and so really it's check your expectations at the door and as well that. as your wallet and you go in and it's no rules all night. Uh, you're going to be in there. It's a four-hour event, but we typically find that once people come, they're there for the night because they're just having so much fun. Because you really, truly have fair activities, fair-like activities. Mm -hmm. You're going to a fair. Um, so what are some of those activities that people um, can participate in? Well, some of the staples that I'm pretty sure our attendees would throw a fit if we got rid of the cakewalk. The cakewalk is so popular. Um, and this year it's the Nothing, nothing Bunt Cakes Cakewalk uh, because Nothing Bunt Cakes is providing all the cake for the cakewalk this year. So, And those ladies are oh, phenomenal at Nothing Bunt Cakes, so love they those. They do a great job. Um, and then we have an old-fashioned ring toss, except you're ringing bottles of wine, and okay. then whatever bottle of wine you ring, you get to take home with you. I and, did that last time. Yeah. And some people spend their entire night at the ring <laughs> toss, and that is okay. <laughs> Um, and this year the wine was donated by Republic National Distributing, okay. so we're uh, appreciative to have their support too. Um, but some of the other, I don't know, what are some of your favorites? Well, you know, the flyer just came out earlier this week, or the invitation came out earlier this week, and it kind of highlights what are, what are some of the new events this year. And, mm -hmm. you know, I recall seeing uh, Basketball Connect Four and Zoltar, if you ever saw uh, Big with Tom Hanks. And then mm -hmm. what's, what's the new, the... Uh, Balloonicorn blowout. Balloon okay, you touch on that this one. This one's going to be popular, I think. So you will um, put on a helmet that has a unicorn head and a horn. Okay. And you walk into a tent with balloons suspended at the top, and you have to jump and try and oh pop gosh. the balloons with your helmet. And if you pop a balloon that has confetti in it, then you get a prize. Th this event is just so much fun. It's so much fun. So where is it at? It's Th at Baxter Arena. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then people can buy tickets. Absolutely, yes. The best way to buy tickets would be our website, um, which is teamqli.com. Okay. And there is a tab at the top for Evening at the Fair, so just click on that and it will walk you through how and to And how much are tickets. tickets? They are $150 okay. a piece. Um, but the best deal is if you get a group of friends, you can buy a Fair Fun Pack, okay. which is a savings off the individual ticket price, but you get eight tickets for $1,000. Okay, which I would highly suggest to everybody because this is so much fun. Um, and you're supporting such a great cause. I mean, it's just like a it's like a win-win all the way around. So, um, again, team so tickets teamqli.com/fair um, to buy tickets for the event. And I also want to encourage everybody. You guys have been on our giving guide. You we have a great profile on um, the giving guide and event book. If you want to learn more as well, along with their website. So. Thank you for coming on, and we're like a, a month out, so yeah. this, we're excited. Thanks for having us. Yeah. We're excited, yeah. too. So. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, and we'll be right back. Well, I'm excited to have here Susie Nelson. She is the executive director for Angels Among Us, a really awesome organization started. Um, I mean, this is a fairly new organization. Um, Susie, welcome. Thank you. And this was, was it 2006 when this came to be? Angels Among Us was born in 2006. Yeah. Um, two women who had met each other in the um, children's oncology ward at Children's Hospital Medical Center um, became friends and really wanted to create a nonprofit that could financially support families who were 
battling a pediatric cancer here in our community. Because were they both were they both in that situation? Is that how they came to um, be? Or? No, Kelly Walsh, who's one of the founders, um, her son Skyler was going through treatment at the okay. time, and Kathy Bauer was a wonderful volunteer in the community who okay. would go up and visit with families and just make them feel yeah. special. And yeah. again, really saw a need that families, when when a child has cancer and when you find out that diagnosis, that is just devastating and it's just like you're, everything just changes in your life. Yeah. Um, in a lot of cases, one parent has to leave a job to care for the child. Uh, yeah. We have a number of families that we're supporting from other communities. Um, Kearney, for instance, those families have to travel here and so one parent right. has to leave a job and that creates a financial burden for the family. So that's where we step in. So what you do um, is you families have to uh, to apply but then once they're approved they receive five hundred dollars a month or up to five hundred dollars a month to help them with the rent and the utility bills mm -hmm. and the, the food or whatever they whatever that need yeah they receive five hundred dollars a month and they identify the bill that they want us to pay on their behalf okay okay and so that way we ensure the funds go for their intended purpose and sure. about a year ago, um, we were blessed to be able to increase our length of time supporting families from 12 months to 18 months per yeah. family. So each family receives the equivalent of $9,000 over, yeah. over that and that's period. And that's huge because, again, as you're going through this process of, of caring for your child, um, the emotional piece of that is just incredible, but also having a little bit of relief financially knowing that Angels Among Us is helping them out, not just for now, not 12 months, but 18 months. Right, and it takes that bill out of their hands so they don't even yeah. have to think about it. They know it's being paid, yeah. so yeah. So you have an event coming up. Um, we were just talking briefly before we started to, to film, No Place Like Home. Um, that just really kind of exemplifies, or it's so perfect because this is a home. Mm -hmm. So talk about the, the theme and the gala. So we chose No Place Like Home because last year, the most of our funding went to families to pay rent and mortgage payments. And we want people to understand that this is really significant, that our funding is allowing those people not to worry about the threat of eviction yeah. or the threat of foreclosure on a home, that they can stay in their home. Um, and double-sided to that is that we will be celebrating our new home in 2019, um, along with the Ronald McDonald House. So. Which is really exciting. Yeah. Um, I just think there's, yeah, that's a really exciting development for, for so yeah. many different organizations yeah. like yours. So currently you're assisting 60 families. Um, do you see that need going up or where, how does that? Um, we increased from 40 to 60 this year okay. um, because of need. We had yeah. 16 applications in the last quarter of last year alone. Okay. Um, we currently have eight families on the waiting list and we're able to roll on three families per month. While we're able to keep up with the need right now, uh, Children's Hospital Medical Center is building a second tower and we know that that mm -hmm. um, need mm -hmm. is going to increase over the, ne over the next couple of yeah. years. So. Absolutely. So going back to the event, it's on September 21st. It's a Friday. Um, where, where the, the view on State Street? Yeah. Okay. The view on State Street. We moved out there because we're making some changes to the event to make it fun. Um, it'll include our typical silent auction, live auction program, but we're also going to do a nightcap concert on their back patio. So, oh. Yeah. That's going to, how fun is that? Yeah. That's going to be great. Yeah. Um, and how can people buy tickets? They can go to our website, www.myangelsamongus.org, and go to the events page, and they can sign up to buy tickets there. Okay. And again, um, myangelsamongus.org, buying tickets. How much are tickets? Tickets are 150 a piece. Okay. And that includes all the evening festivities, including yeah. the concert afterwards. Okay. Well, wonderful. Again, you're doing such important work. And again, you know, I've been doing what I've been doing for, you know, since the early 1990s. And this organization that started in 2006, I've just really watched how it's grown and how that there's just such a need for what you what you do and, and how you help families. Yeah. So yeah. I just want to thank you for that. Thank you. And, thank you for having us. Yeah, and thank you for your commitment. So again, um, No Place Like Home Gala, September 21st. Tickets at myangelsamongus.org. Um, you're also featured in our annual giving guide, so you can go to spiritofomaha.com. There's a lot of information about wish lists and how to get involved in that as well on our website. So thank you so much. Thank you.
and we'll be back. Welcome back, and I am here with an amazing lady um, working on one of, I mean, just such an important nonprofit, Rebecca Turner, CEO of Grief's Journey. Um, thank you for being here, Rebecca. Oh, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. I could talk all day about all of our programs. I know. you. What an important um, organization. We'll talk about your event coming up because okay. there's some, some fun new things that you're doing, but let's just talk about Grief's Journey. And, and what, what is your mission? I mean, what, what do you guys do? Thanks for that. Um, we exist so that no one has to walk their grief journey alone. Yeah. And it was a couple of years ago that we changed our name just to be a little bit more transparent about that. We were sure. formerly Teddy Bear Hollow. Yes. And I tell people that because there are still some people that remember that. Yeah. So we were founded as an organization that served kids and their families who had gone through a, a, just a devastating loss of some type. Right. And now we serve all ages. So three to 103 or 113 okay. yeah. um, family support and uh, individual support in a peer support group setting. Right. Because I, th thank God, I mean, I've never had to deal with the loss of, um, you know, somebody, it's kind of like un the unexpected mm -hmm. loss. Um, or, you know, a grandparent loss, but there's, but grief comes in all different it stages and in, in, in different ways and depending on what your personal relationship is. Absolutely. And it's hard. And I should also make sure I'm, I'm being um, transparent in that we serve multiple causes of, of grief. Yeah. So it's, it's not just bereavement. There are, there are other things that cause grief and who are we to say how another person is affected by whatever yeah. the loss is. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that, again, that is so important. Um, so you raised funds again. You said you were you were Teddy Bear Hollow until has it been two years or three years? It's about a year and a half. About a year and a half. Okay, yep. all right. So time flies. Oh my gosh, it does. time just flies by. Um, your event, um, you've got a couple, but the one that we'll focus on a little bit more is the 20, 20th Annual Remembrance Walk. Mm -hmm. um, I participated in that many times. It's really important, and to see the families co that come out and and walk for a, a loved one. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. So let's talk Wearing about Wearing their t-shirts or yeah. their memorial buttons or sometimes they'll even have a, a photo of a pet or, or something else they've lost and it's, yeah. it's, it's very sweet. And a lot of them um, make it an annual tradition. Yes. So it's, it's sort of like a family reunion for some of them. But 20 years, major milestone. The event actually predates Teddy Bear Hollow and Grief's Journey. Yeah. It was founded as a race, okay. uh, a, a running event, and then it just evolved into something even more programmatic because we found that there were so many people that were coming back and needed that sort of annual touchstone to, to come out and support one another. Well, and I have to say 20 years ago, especially me doing all the different 5Ks that I've been doing mm -hmm. over the last couple years, 20 years ago, that was not that was kind of an unusual thing. There mm -hmm. weren't a lot of races or walks or runs or whatnot 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, and I've seen how this has grown because this year it's at... Miller's Landing. Okay. Yep. Downtown. Down by the beautiful pedestrian bridge. Yeah. And how, how long, is, is it a 5K or how long is it? It, it, it is a 5K. The route okay. is, is certainly a 5K, but... Um, Which is only, it's three miles. It's, it's really... Only, I mean, it's easy. It's more than a walk, though, and yeah. some people can choose to walk only a small yeah. portion of it. Um, a lot of them just come and do the fun, the games, because yeah. it's, it's really this festival atmosphere yeah. with the, the trucks and, um, like, the, the fire department will be there and right. the roller girls will be there and all of those just fun... Yeah festival activities. So this year, teams, T 
tennis shoes and tutus. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> and I and I see that you have a tutu making tutu making station. Okay. What the heck is that about? Well, we always have costumes. Yes, the, the, yes. the families and others love to have these team t-shirts and so forth, and we always award um, a best costume. Right. And it invariably goes to the kid in the tutu. Yeah. So we wanted to level the playing field, and there were a lot of adults that said they wanted to wear tutus, and so everybody that wants one can make a tutu, and it, it kind of stiffens the competition. The other teams have to just pull out the stops and oh my gosh, I work love that much it. harder. Yeah. I love it. I think that, and that, I think to me, having tutus and having all that just fun, you know, whether it's glittery stuff or it's just, it makes it more of a celebration and it, it, it kind of brings you back to that silliness or that joyfulness um, of just, you know. You're making new memories. Yeah. You're there to remember, but you're also making new memories yeah. and you're remembering that you can have joy and laugh. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So this is August 18th. It's coming up, um, I think two weeks, is it two weeks from Saturday? Yep. Two weeks from Saturday. Um, 9 to 11.30, Miller's Landing. Uh, how can people people sign up? Do they raise funds? How, what's the... There are a lot of different ways to sign up and, and raise funds. You can phone us or you can go to our website. That's the easiest. Okay. And there are a lot of online forms that can take you to the different avenues okay. to get yeah. registered. So your um, website is griefsjourney.org. Mm -hmm. um, you can go to the events page. And I also want to say that you guys um, have been in our annual giving guide. So... Uh, encouraging people to also go there as well because you have giving opportunities volunteer opportunities wish lists there's a there's it's just a kind of a great one sheet um to kind of say what you guys are all about and yeah we're, you know honored to have you a part of that well, thank you but i'm excited for the event i will be there so i don't need to bring a tutu do i come and just make a tutu or do i bring a tutu you can make a tutu you can bring your own tutu okay. you can wear your tiara have a lot of tutus, you can wear capes okay. there are a lot of capes yeah. too that show up yeah yeah okay all right, I'm so excited, Rebecca. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for coming having on the show. Me. You're welcome. Yeah, You're welcome. I'm glad to be here. And so remember, August 18th, be there. Remember and walk, and um, we'll be right back. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope these organizations and stories inspired you. You can learn more at spiritofomaha.com, and we will see you next week.